More than 3 million people globally die of water-related diseases. दूषित पानी पीने की वजह से पेट की शिकायत 2030 तक देश की 40 प्रतिशत आबादी के पास पीने का पानी नहीं होगा. What is the reason for the elixir that grants us life, turning into a hazardous poison for so many vulnerable communities? Meet Karthik from Bhalswa village near Jahangirpuri, Delhi. Karthik wakes up in the morning and is greeted by the sight of grey water, his village looking like some post-apocalyptic version of Venice. This water is barely suitable for bathing, much less drinking, forcing Karthik, a member of a small migrant labourer community with an average monthly income of just 5 to 7,000 rupees, to have to spend up to 10 to 15% of his salary just towards buying plastic water cans. Just like Karthik, the rest of the village does not have any reliable sources of pure water. Even though there are one or two RO systems, we found that RO is not a viable solution to this water crisis. According to the WHO, RO water is more harmful than tap water as it removes up to 92-99% to of useful minerals, putting people at the risk of developing diseases due to mineral imbalance. 3 litres of water are wasted for every 1 litre of output, as well as an unquantifiable amount of electricity. There is a high installation and maintenance cost and these filters are made up of non-biodegradable and toxic materials. Why do these issues happen? Water sources like Ganga and Yamuna are heavily polluted. Pipes often don't carry water or are poorly maintained and cracked. Turning on taps can pull in dirty water from outside sources through cracks in pipes. All these things scared us to no end and forced us to rack our brains to come to a solution. Eventually, after many rounds of brainstorming and trial and error, we at an Axis DDOC have come up with Project Saranio and built a non-electric, cheap, effective, environment-friendly, multi-level water filtration system made up of three earthen pots filled with a variety of components that work to purify, clean and decontaminate the water. The first layer is made up of bioactive riverine sand. Specialized for water filtration, it traps and removes microplastics from the water and aids in the reduction of disease-causing microorganisms. The second layer is made up of gravel, which traps suspended impurities and provides a base to slow down the flow of water for further filtration. The third layer is a mini UF filtration unit. It consists of chemicals that push water towards and through a semi-permeable membrane, which is capable of stopping colloids, proteins, bacteria, pyrogens and macromolecules larger than the membrane pore size from water. Then we have a layer of charcoal treated or activated with oxygen to open up pores within the substance. It has an enormous surface area which enables it to absorb, trap or catch odors, colors and harmful chemicals and separate them from water. Lastly we have the pots. We all know that pots help to keep the water cool but the pots themselves also have a number of filtration qualities. Clay is an alkaline substance and hence neutralizes the acidity in impure water. Earthen pots also have a porous microtexture which traps and removes a lot of contaminants and we're not even considering how much better off water is not being stored in plastic containers that have harmful chemicals like BPAs. All in all, this is how we treat and clean water without electricity. But apart from the scientific benefits, why did we choose pots in the first place? Let's talk about another community on the opposite side of Delhi, known as Kumhar Gram or Potter's Village. This is a community of over 2,000 people that have all been engaged in one profession for the past many, many generations. Pottery. But, as the demand for earthen pots is falling off a cliff, they are forced to reduce prices to the point where they barely manage to break even. What does this lead to? Due to low income, these families do not have enough money for luxuries beyond bare necessities, even things like education. Pot making as a profession and as an art form is slowly dying forcing many members of the community to potentially have to look for alternative sources of income. Firstly, we will be helping thousand other people like Karthik living in Bhalswa village by eliminating their dependence on plastic water cans as our filter can produce up to 12 litres of clean water a day. We will also reduce the likelihood of children in the village getting sick due to waterborne diseases like cholera. Because we've been able to make this filter for around 300 rupees, we can ease the economic burden on these communities by selling them a filter for less than 500 rupees. We also have a tremendous impact on the environment by preventing the wastage of water by RO systems, reducing usage of plastic for water filtration and storage, and by making this filter with mostly natural and biodegradable materials. We will be assuring the Porter's community a constant source of revenue by placing bulk and recurring orders. We will also keep them involved in every step of the process, including, but not limited to, maintenance of the filter, marketing, as well as day-to-day -day administration of the project. After extracting our initial investment, we plan to hand over the entire project to them after they develop the required skills through us.